So, Mr. Shubham. Shubham, is it? Yes. All right. You know, in the joint Indo-US statement during the President Trump's visit, there was a reference being made to what is known as Blue Dot Network. What is this Blue Dot Network? Uh, so Blue Dot Network uh, is a private sector-led uh, network mm -hmm. which focuses on capacity building mm -hmm. and uh, transparent uh, infrastructure building, which okay. is in contrast to the Belt and Road Initiative by China, which is uh, based on debt draft diplomacy and is uh, quite opaque in nature. So, uh, is this being considered a Blue Dot Network? Is it being considered as a counter to the Chinese BRI or over? Uh, I, I wouldn't say, sir, it can be a counter because uh, BRI is uh, the, the scale at which BRI is working and the kind of uh, resources which Chinese are pumping in. It cannot be counted by uh, uh, just a concept of a blue dot network. Mm -hmm. But if when looked at in the context of, uh, if we look at the overall thing, for example, India uh, and Japan with the Asia-Africa growth corridor, the blue dot network, etc. These uh, things at least bring in a narrative uh, mm -hmm. which can at least counter uh, BRI. Okay, so now uh, reference is made to the BRI, the uh, China Pakistan Economic Corridor. Uh, China is spending a lot of money in that, isn't it? So, why? What is the significance uh, of this corridor for China? Uh, so China has um, been pumping a lot of money, uh, it's about $60 billion in mm -hmm. China Pakistan yeah. Economic Corridor. Yeah. Uh, so it has multiple aspects to it. For mm. example, uh, the first one would be it allows China uh, to uh, forego its uh, Malacca dilemma. Mm. Uh, most of its energy comes in from the Malacca Strait and mm. uh, the Gwadir port can be an alternative to that. But uh, it's, and uh, so it uh, second way is that it gives China an access to the Arabian Sea and therefore the Middle East and uh, therefore uh, show its presence in this part of the area where otherwise it hasn't been. And then it has other strategic aspects as well in the sense that... Actually the main, uh, the main uh, strategic uh, significance is the fact of the Malacca dilemma, right? Not only that, it cuts down the, uh, the, the distance also. Yes. What is the length of the CPEC? I'm sorry? What is the length of the CPEC? I'm sorry, sir. That's about 3,000 kilometers to Zigjag. And then another, if you take it to the eastern coast, say another 3,000. It's 6,000 kilometers. While the route which they take now is almost double of that. So that's a very major area. Now, uh, India, of course, put, uh, is not very happy with the CPEC. Why is that? Uh, sir, India has sovereignty concerns. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, strategic ones as well. That now we'll have greater Chinese presence in the uh, in its own backyard. Yeah. Now uh, we we have lodged a protest because uh, when they started making this, uh, it was going through our area or what we claim is ours. Uh, but in the Doklam incident, we took a very very strong stand. We uh, refused to budge. We sent it. We augmented our troops. Why is that? Said so, Doklam is different because over here, uh, so that is, uh, but so India has been very vocal about it, but you're right that the uh, responses were different. Doklam is at the tri junction of India, Bhutan, and uh, China. Bhutan and India have the, uh, have the friendship treaty uh, since 1949, and also it passes through, it's close to the chicken neck, and therefore, uh, uh, that's what strategy. you should bring that up first. <laughs> it's not a question of our. Friendship with Bhutan, the chicken's neck. If they had allowed, if, if we had allowed them to come there, it would have brought them closer to our choke point. Yes. And therefore, we had to take a very, very strong stand. Now, when we talk of China, this uh, other issue is this you know, string of pearls. They say this. What is the string of pearls concept? Uh, it's a string of pearls is a group of uh, islands uh, uh, which uh, China has been uh, uh, sort of islands. Uh, not necessarily uh, islands, but yeah. for example, the Hamban Tota, the Gwadar, and right. then we have uh, in Myanmar uh, the Simek, uh, Kwakpo Port, mm. then there's the issue of Krak and Al as well. So basically, so, they are trying to establish so themselves in the Indian Ocean region. Yes. yes, that's true. Okay, thank you. You're with the Indian oil and in a permanent job, and you're earning a handsome salary. 
Why then do you want to change and come to the civil services? Uh, I mean, you know, it is a great job, mm. uh, but uh, there are two prime reasons for coming into civil services. Uh, one is the job satisfaction and the job diversity. I feel that Indian oil is much more respected to the university students, and I want to explore other aspects as well. Okay. Do you have the qualities to make a good civil servant? I like to believe that. Let's I hear do. some of the qualities which you have. Uh, Ma'am, I think uh, I'm a good listener. Okay. Uh, so, listener will help you? Riots take place and you will be listening only? Uh, Ma'am, uh, I think even there it's very important to okay. listen. Okay, what else? Uh, I'm hardworking. Okay. Uh, I'm honest. Honest. Do uh, you have leadership qualities? Yes, ma'am. Able to make decisions quickly? I like to believe that. All right. Now, you've given ADMUT as your card of preference, but it's not necessary that you would get this card. Then would you go to another card if you're given the choice? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You will work for it. All right. Now, uh, tell me something about, just mention some of the internal security problems which our country is faced with today. Just mention them first. Uh, Ma'am, there's a problem of uh, extremism, which is manifested in different forms. We have left-wing extremism, and there's religious extremism. Uh, then I would say the border issues as well. It has internal uh, connotations as well. Uh, and I would say uh, uh, even this, uh, or, uh, or democracy, uh, if we see the greater criminalization of politics, I also see it as a soft uh, internal security issue as well. You know. yeah. What about black money? You don't see black money as a security problem? Terror funding? Apologies, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Uh, black money, money laundering, uh, etc. Okay. If I were to ask you, what are the global challenges that we are faced with? Could you name a few uh, challenges? Like we as a country or as? Globally, everyone's faced with the same challenge. Uh, recently, ma'am, it's been the coronavirus. Uh, okay, uh, yes. The global uh, yes. potential. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Taking of this. Uh, Growing, uh, what the external affairs minister said, growing inward is a matter of What about, uh, all right, what about climate change? Like you don't climate. see that as a threat? Yes, ma'am, definitely. So, is anything being done regarding climate change? Any conferences that you are aware of? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we recently had the COP25 mm -hmm. in Madrid, and uh, we have another one lined up mm -hmm. in Glasgow, uh, COP26. So, what is being done here? Uh, Ma'am, after the Paris Accord of mm. 2015, we have been... intended. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so we, uh, all the nations were asked to come up with their uh, uh, plans for mm. uh, 2030. And now we are trying to make a rule book uh, as to how the emissions will be counted. Then there's also the issue of uh, trading uh, uh, oh, and then uh, financing of the uh, climate uh, then there's about climate justice as well. So why are we so concerned about warming, global warming? Uh, Ma'am, uh, so global warming would mean melting of the polar ice caps, which would uh, increase the uh, sea levels. Uh, secondly, it would uh, what it would also mean that so if the mountains uh, are uh, melting, uh, it would have direct impact on the entire ecology and ecosystem. And the so fresh water also, the availability of fresh water? Yes ma'am, submergence of, uh, mm. uh, of land and then it would even have adverse effects like uh, has been manifested in the recent forest fires, uh, yes. irregular monsoons, etc. So we, we could be potentially looking at a six global, a six mass uh, extinction. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. What are uh, the federal uh, features? Uh, a constitution which are present in our constitution. Some of the features which are required for a federal constitution. Uh, sir, we have a written constitution. Uh, we have an independent judiciary. Uh, then we have the Schedule 7, which uh, separates, uh, which has the state list, uh, center, uh, the central list, and the uh, concrete list. Uh, then uh, there's also rigidity in the constitution. Even though it's flexible as well, so in that sense, uh, uh, yes, rigidity. Uh, we we'll stop here. The, uh, all portions of the constitution, all provisions are not rigid. 
there are specific provisions which are listed in Article 368. And what is the connecting thread? What connects all these features, all these provisions which are rigid? Uh, since the basic structure doctrine, uh, which was uh, propounded by the Supreme Court, basic structure uh, bars amendment altogether. Am I correct? Right, sir. Uh, but we are, I'm talking of some provisions which are rigid and can be amended. Not like that. You are aware of Article 360. Yes, sir. What? Uh, what are? How the Constitution is amended? Right, sir. With a special majority in and both the houses. <laughs> so can, can also be by simple majority. Yes, sir. There are some things which can be by which by which provisions are rigid. Why? Uh, so, if I am able to understand the uh, question correctly, uh, no, the, all these provisions which require uh, ratification by the states. Okay. What connects those uh, provisions? They touch upon the rights of the state. Okay. Okay. Now, forty-fourth uh, amendment. Why is it important? So, 44th Amendment was important because it undid uh, some of the potential, uh, uh, some of the steps which were taken in the 42nd Amendment. So, in that sense, uh, uh, it brought in stability uh, once again to the constitutional scheme. Okay. Uh, government of India at 1935. What we have borrowed from that? Uh, so, uh, we have borrowed a lot of things. In fact, the, the basic skeleton is uh, probably the, the Government of India Act of 1935. Uh, we have uh, the, 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 for example, the Schedule 7, the demarcation between the uh, center and the states. Uh, then there was, uh, we, we still have the post of Governor, which was also in the uh, Government of India Act. Um, Okay, can you tell us about some of the laws that we have today to deal with corruption? Uh, Sir, so there's the Prevention of Corruption Act. Uh, there's the there's also the Money Laundering Act. Um, we recently passed the Lokpal uh, Act. And, uh, and fugitive uh, offenders. Now you tell us about the amendments that were introduced recently to the prevention of corruption. I'm sorry, sir. I, I cannot recall. Okay. You're working in Indian oil, so your organization has a lot of tendering. Correct. Right. Tenders a lot, right. and the tendering is done, and items contractors selected on the L1 tender basis. You know the L1 system. Right, sir. I know it's a bit on my. Uh, the lowest bidder. Right, sir. Yeah, price bid. Right. Is this a good system? Um, if yes, why? If not, why not? Sir, I would say it's complicated. Uh, so because uh, it's a good system in the sense that uh, it has uh, in the within the system it is inbuilt that probably there wouldn't be uh, uh, like there are not chances of favoritism uh, to some extent. But it's not good in the sense. For example, uh, what it would mean is that there is no lower bar. So a contractor can quote as low as he can, and then uh, he can subject the the contract labor, for example, to uh, so he can uh, sort of uh, reduce their uh, the money which they get. Uh, they can be extortion in that sense. You need to read up on that. There are some bars which are put over there on the lower side. Okay. It's not that for hundred crore budget I'll bid ten bucks and get it. No, okay. right. there are bars on that. Okay. Uh, related to that, there was recently two days back an article that the L one system may undergo a change. Did you read about that? Sorry, okay, doesn't matter. Fake news. You are well educated. You must be on the computer half the time, right? Fake news. What's the problem? Is it prevalent in India? Is it prevalent in the world? What are we doing in India, and what is the world doing about it? Very briefly. Uh, what is it firstly? So fake news, as the name suggests, uh, is news which is not right, which is bogus. So I think the problem has increased uh, because 
unlike the 90s and the 2000s where we had the conventional uh, newspapers and the and the uh, broadcasting channels now we have a bit of social media and the characteristic feature of social media is that not only is everyone assimilating I mean, information my question was uh, that is answered now tell me the second part what are we doing about it if it is like it what are we doing about it does it exist in the rest of the world and what is the world doing about it three other questions in the next one uh, sir, what are we doing about it? Uh, sir, uh, the government of India is collaborating with social media companies and we are putting in place a code of conduct and there's also regular monitoring, technology based and manual. So we are working on that. But it's again complicated because we have to balance it with Article 90. It exists in the rest of the world? Right, sir. It does exist. In fact, uh, what is the rest of the world doing about it? Sir, uh, once again, we are just evolving as a, in fact, entire, entire world is uh, kind of trying to. Uh, solve this problem. So we have the United States as well. Uh, there was a Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal. So uh, we, uh, everybody uh, as a country, um, as a world needs to come together and sort of uh, develop these guidelines and I think okay. it has to be okay. a technology. Based. So let's get back to it because now it's a different perspective on the same issue. You said we have to balance what we are doing with Article 19. I presume you are referring to constitutional provisions, right? Yes. Now if you are referring to those and you are in the field, as a district magistrate. Social media is spreading rumors, fake rumors like what happened in Delhi recently, that there is trouble breaking out. And they are going to do it for an extended period, like what has happened in JNK. Would you, as a district magistrate, if I asked you from state headquarters, should we shut down the social media platforms in your district? Would you recommend that I do it or would you match it against Article 19? If that is the right article to start with. There are other articles also. What would you, as a district magistrate, suggest? Sir. My thing is not for one day, it's for one month. My question to you. For one month. Uh, sir, I would say <clears> as a <throat> district magistrate, my first and foremost responsibility is law and order. So I have to I have to see the situation on the ground. What would you recommend? It has already led to a few deaths. If it has led to a, a few deaths and if the situation is volatile, for at that very moment I would I would recommend. Uh, what happens to the need to balance? Sir. As a, you have taken, when you join service, you take an oath to the constitution, to all the articles, all the lengthy articles. What happened to that? Sir, even uh, so, talk, for example, talking about 90, Article 19 as well, there's Article 92. Which no, I just asked you, your own statement that you need to balance. What happens to that in this situation? Sir, so this is a situation where uh, right to life of people is involved. And I would say right to life takes precedence over... Okay, okay thank you. Then, what are the strategic reserves? Where do they exist in India? Uh, strategic reserves uh, are the reserve for fields of oil, um, which, uh, which sort of store the crude oil or the crude oil. Crude oil. Not necessarily, it can be. Refined some... oil also? They can be stored. No, sir, they, uh, they cannot be stored. <laughs> <laughs> So, where are the, how, what is the capacity of our strategic reserves and where are they located? Uh, I'm sorry sir, I'm not aware of the capacity, but I know they, they cannot last for very long. Uh, uh, I think there's one located in Andhra Pradesh, but I'm not... Uh, Vizek? Right sir, I think it's in Vizek, but I'm, I'm not sure sir. Where more, where, some more are coming up, where? Sir, I think there's one in Karnataka. <laughs> when Mr. Modi visited Siberia, Vladivostok, are you aware that he visited there some months ago? Mm -hmm. I am aware. You are aware? I am aware, sir. When people started talking, I mean, some newspapers start saying that this is Act Far East policy. Act Far East. Act East and Act Far East. What is its relevance for us? of this act for East policy? Uh, sir, uh, so there are uh, once again multiple dimensions to it. Uh, India is investing about $1 billion in the Far East. And, uh, one? About $1 billion. Yes, uh, is investing. Uh, so private sector. already invested $7 billion, sir. So what private, uh, private uh, no. to my knowledge, sir. I no, your knowledge is wrong. Sure, sir. India has extended a credit line of oh, yeah. credit line. I beg your pardon, sir. It is already invested, sir. 
So what is the importance? Uh, sir, it has a uh, strategic importance. Uh, it opens uh, the... You are not coming to the point. Uh, sir, uh, you are you're, you're connected with oil. Now you talk. I am giving you a hint. Sir, the, the, the ceilings, uh, the distance from the Lady Vostok to Chennai port. Again, you haven't caught on. India has invested heavily in the oil fields of Russia. In Siberia, Sakhalin 1. Have you heard of it? Yes, sir. 7 billion dollars. India is lessening is its oil dependence on Middle East yeah, countries and developing its stake here. In which companies it has taken a stake or in which oil fields? Uh, it sir, has bought a stake. It's a Rosneft. Hmm? With Rosneft. With Rosneft. Yes, Rosneft is a company. Yes, sir. Tell me the fields. Sorry, sir. No? Sakhalin 1, yes, sir. Vancor. Vancor is handled by Rosneft. So Vancor is a field. Why are ceasefire violations by Pakistan taking place in Jammu and not in Kashmir? Uh, you are from Jammu? Yes, sir. I'm Have you ever studied this from? Sir, I think they take place in. So I. Mm -hmm. I, I believe the idea can be that uh, probably it is uh, less. Current. Last year, more than 2000 violations took place. 2019. Why all in Jammu and not in Kashmir? I'm not aware of it, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You think you should study it? Sure. Uh, yeah. You should ask yourself this question. Yes, sir. There is an answer to it. What is the mischief, constitutional mischief, which 42nd, I know, which 42nd amendment committed? What damage it committed to our India's polity? 42nd amendment. So I, uh, I believe it. Uh, think, think before you answer. If you don't know it, don't worry. I will ask you more questions. So I'm getting confused. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, that there would be no uh, restrictions on the power of the parliament. Absolutely, the absolutely. You got it. It established the principle of parliamentary rule, so, supremacy or sovereignty, and ousted the jurisdiction of the judiciary. So, which landmark judgment of the Supreme Court reversed this position and undid the mischief? Uh, say the case when in the Bharti case. Uh, when did this amendment take place? So the Minerva Mills. Uh, ah, sorry. now you go and it. Hmm. It happened during the emergency. Right. Yes. Oh, sorry, sir. Okay. One or two more questions. What is our renewable energy target for 2022? Uh, sir, we have a target of 175. Out of which 100 is solar. Yes. How much solar have we reached all now, till now? Now we are in 2020. Sir. How much have we reached? It's about uh, 30, 35, sir. 38 or 37. Yes, <clears throat> At this rate, do you think we'll achieve 100? No, sir. It's impossible. Now, last question. West Asia. You were asked about BRI. You were asked CBEC, etc. Right. BRI. Now you know what China is doing in, in the Arabian Sea area, West Asia. Is India also responding in some way and establishing its presence like China is doing? Uh, sir, specifically to West Asia or in general? Is the question specifically in context of... No, no. You are raising a wrong question. Right. Is India, the, you should know what are the facts. Is India also doing something of that type? Right, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, we are doing multiple things. For example, India and Japan are collaborating with the Asia Africa Growth Corridor as a counter to BRI. Then, as a counter to String of Pearls, we no, have. you say what specifically is on this corridor, Africa, etc. It is not taken off yet, it is all on paper. Tell me what 
specifically we have done or we are doing? Sir, it's a very simple question. There is nothing very difficult. Sir, we have our diamond of necklaces as I counted on a string of pearls. Have you done Chava? Yes, sir. Then would you not like to quote that first of all? Uh, sir, I would yeah. have, but... Uh, but I would have what? Uh, so yesterday, the Supreme Leader's tweet, and uh, so we are seeing that there is a growing deterioration of the relationships between... Oh, you are already anticipating uh, <laughs> breach of diplomatic relations, it seems. Yeah? <laughs> no. Yes. It is not so easy. India has invested so much. Both China, uh, Iran and India have stayed there. How can we just uproot it? But India has developed that Java port. Anything else India is doing in Arabian Sea? So we are developing its links with countries, trying to develop islands. Yes, sir. Then Dukkab why don't you say? Dukkab port in Oman. India is developing yeah. the Dukkab port in no, Oman. No, it is not developing. No, sir. You are wrong. It has only got logistics facilities there. Oh, sorry. It has been now, in two ports are being developed, if you are aware. One in Mauritius, one in Seychelles. Now, do you know the names of those ports? Uh, so the Assumption Island. Yes. And uh, I don't know. Agaliga. Agaliga. Yes. Mm. You are aspiring for foreign service, international relations, are you? You must know these things. All right. We close the interview. How do you think you will perform? Uh, could have done a little better. Could have done better. Good. Now you focus on this. First is you find answer to our, our question, which we have raised. We raised about 20, 25 questions. Then concentrate on JNK, PI, PSIR, electrical engineering, foreign service issues, constitutional issues, hmm? and important judgments of the Supreme Court and current affairs. These are the areas where you must work. Time is very short, but whatever you can do, time. Study seven eight hours a day on these subjects, one hour on each. Then you you'll have more information. So get cracking now. Hmm? Okay, uh, sir. If, if you can tell me the answer to that question, why are there more things by violation than Jammu? Violation? I was stumped. You were stumped. <laughs> it is so easy uh, in there. Is, is easier to infiltrate during summer months. Okay. Very easy, even in winter months, it's easier to infiltrate. It's very difficult to infiltrate in Kashmir. Kashmir infiltration starts in, in, winter, in summer and we are com sitting on commanding heights. You know commanding heights? You high on the hills. Whereas this fellow in Kashmir, they just disappear through the jungles. You don't need to fire at anything. You just sneak in, in summer months. The maximum infiltration is taking place mostly in winter here, in okay. GNK. In Jammu. Sure. Uh, in Jammu area. Yeah, that's so, why we had a tunnel and... Yes. Sure. And they can cause more harm to civilian population in Jammu than in Kashmir, because they are, where will you find? It's all heights. Sure. Are you understanding? Sure. Yes. Yeah, the LOC runs in a very different way. Sure, sir. So this is it. It is much easier to cause damage and scare. See, these are the reasons. Got it? Yes. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.